Okay, how do we make a log log plot? Let's think about having one variable a ranging from say one, two, three through five in the independent variable. And a dependent variable that we would say is 1.1, 2.2, 3.3, 4.4, 5.5. .4, 5 .5. We'll open the figure, move it aside on that out of the way, open up our screen a little bit, keep that conveniently close and see what a simple plot command would do. Plot A versus B is going to be with the defaults, which is blue line. Not very pretty, not very informative, so let's do this again and plot using a square in black joined by a dashed line. Put the grid on, let's put some labels on. Put a title on. We have a plot. If we want to make this into a log plot, we can do a variety of different things. Clearly, we're going to need to illustrate this for some variables that have some sort of logarithmic dependency. Well, how about starting all over and making B something that goes up by quite a bit. If we're just going to plot this as we did before, we're going to have most of the interesting dependent variables scrounged here by zero while the growth of this relationship is leaving a large area of the plot blank. Not a good looking plot. The logarithmic dependency, or at least the growth in the variable, is in the y variable, the dependent variable. So a better looking plot is going to use the function semilog y of those same variables. Now, with the grid on and the labels on and the title on, we have a logarithmic plot in Y. Now, if that's the case, clear next question could be how to make a semi-log in Y plot into a semi-log in X plot. Conveniently, if we make the X axis a logarithmic dependent variable and then plot B versus A, we'll have a log plot where the logs appear on the other axis. Now, perhaps we have logarithmic dependencies in both variables. B, remind us, let's make an A that's like B, but maybe multiply by pi. A quick plot of A versus B with some other symbol, maybe a circle in red joined by a dashed line. Once again, isn't going to be very informative at all because on this linear scale, all the interesting data are right in the corner. Both of these variables 
would benefit from a logarithmic scaling of the axis. For this, MATLAB has a third function that we could use, and that one is log log. Let's make this one using a inverted triangle or a triangle. Let's make it green and let's join it by dots. Grid on, grid on, again, label, label, title, we're good to go. You might not like the fact that these axis labels say 10 to the 0, 10 to the 1, 10 to the 2, 10 to the 3, 10 to the 4, and so on. Clearly, we could start all over and instead of plotting the relationships between the variables a and b on a logarithmic scale in both axes, but instead take the logs ourselves and plot them linearly. This would be accomplished by taking the log of the variables before plotting them and evaluating that. Now we get a linear grid, and on the axis we see the exponents. Well, clearly the labeling would have to be adjusted and saying to say log 10 of the first variable, and y would be labeled log 10 of the second variable. Oops. But we still don't really like that. Really what we would want to do in such a case is revert to the linear plot of the logged variables and relabel the axis labels on the y and the x-axis to give us the actual values. How would we do that? Well, I'll start again. And instead of just letting plot create an axis and then some symbols and some lines, I'm going to explicitly start an axis. I like to call the result of this thing, the variable that returns an axis handle and get current axis will create me an empty, unpopulated piece of real estate onto which I can plot what I was plotting before. I'll change symbols again, maybe a different triangle, maybe cyan. Yeah, that's not very nice. Magenta. All right, let's go with this. Put the grid on. Okay, well, let's query the properties of that axis handle that I've created. If we just type and evaluate AH, we will get this axis and its properties. You can see it's linearly scaled. It's got lots of other properties, so showing all properties, I'm going to get all of the properties. It's an awful lot of things. AH is a structure, it's a handle, but it's a structure with properties that we can access using the dot query. As an example, let's take a look. Okay, X tick. That's the location, the values, not the labels, the values on the tick marks, the ones being ticked. So ah dot h tick, properly capitalized, is going to give me those values. I don't particularly like seeing all those halves there, so I'm going to say, let me change it. And let me change, given that I'm taking log tens, 
let me plot tick marks at the log 10 value that would return 0, which is this one, and then maybe 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 5, and why not 6? As soon as I set this property, I'm getting different ticks. If I set the y ticks to the same set, I get that. Well, I may have changed the ticks, but I haven't actually also opened up the axis to include the value 0 through 6. I'm going to use the function xlim to accomplish that. And in this case, I'll just simply say, make it go between 0 and 6. And let's make ylim the function called ylim have the limits on the y-axis also between 0 and 6. Don't really like this. I'm going to go slightly smaller. How about negative a half? And while I'm at it, maybe I'll do that for x2. At least I've got real estate. I occupy my graph in an elegant way. What I now would like to do is change the labels of these ticks such that they don't say 0, but rather 10 to the 0, or perhaps 1, and 100, and 200, and so on. I can query the axis handle property called xtick label, and I would see that I get, indeed, strings for what spells 0, what spells 1, what spells 2, what spells 3, 4, 5, 6, and so on. What type of a thing is AMPS? It's a cell. Now, this is a variable class that collects pieces of things inside of curly braces that form some sort of a collection, a cell array. I'm going to give that cell array a name for now. I'll call it C. C is that, and C of curly braces of 1 and 2 and 3. All of those things are what I think they are, namely the entries in that cell. Let me call C3 the variable D. Now let's look at what D is. Well, D is a character that says the number 3. It's not a number, but it's a character. It's a string that spells 3. So if I change C, the cell containing all those labels, I might change the number, th the third entry of that, into a string that spells 1,000. And 2, 100. And 1, 10. I'm doing it wrong. 1 should be 1. 2 is 10, 3 is 100, 4 is 1,000, 5 is 10,000, 6 is 100,000, 7 is a million. Let's change those tick labels, which were the old C, to the new C. And there I have it. I have changed my tick labels at the ticks 0, 1, 2, and so on, to the values that are 10 to the that power, 1, and then 10, and then 100, and 1,000. So now it's a properly logarithmically labeled plot that at its origin 
has a linear plot of the logarithmically transformed variables. I'll be taking a look at the y tick labels to make sure I'm not making any mistakes, 0 through 6. Knowing that in this case they're the same, I'll just set those old values to the new c, and here too I have the properly annotated logarithmic values, in which case I can slap my old x labels on it, and my title. Now it's just still the relationship. The values being plotted may be logarithmically spaced or logarithmically behaving. It's a little harder to interpret, but at least I have set my labels to the correct values. So semi-log x, semi-log y, log log are alternatives to plot that are logarithmic in the x, the y, or both axes. If I want to use the linearly behaving plot command, I should take logs of my variables, in which case I should also relabel the axes as I have just done. I'm going to clear one last time, plot again the way I used to. But rather, once again, I'll start an axis, give it a variable ah, and then use my plot. Don't like it. It's ugly. Take a look at the properties of ah. What are they? Among other things, they contain all sorts of properties that I can change and set. One of those is X scale. Another one is Y scale. So if you change your mind after having done a plot, changing X scale after the fact to log, will turn that axis into a logarithmic axis with all the proper annotations. If I change the y scale to log, I have the equivalent of a log-log plot, which once again, I should open up a little bit. The limits now might go between what I used to have before, 10 to the minus a half, through 10 to the sixth, same for y, same for the grid, and there I have it again, a log log plot of data, which I have changed from, it used to be a linear plot, to it's now a log log plot. Label. What else might I want to do? Well, I might not, I might not like this labeling. The 10 to the 0, 10 to the 1, it requires computation. Let me try to change those again to numbers that say 1 and 10 and 100. But I've put them, I will put them at the same locations that they were. AH x tick is going to reveal to me that that is ticked at 1 and 10 and 100. But AH tick label is going to tell me that set of strings collected in the cell, which is called ANS for answer, 
that now say 10 to the 0, 10 to the 1, 10 to the 2. Well, I previously collected a new cell which contained the numbers 1 and 10 and 100 and 1000 and so on. Now what I can simply do is I can set those and I can set the Y's as well. So now I've turned a linear plot into a logarithmic plot after the fact and changed the labels to not use exponential notation but to change human intelligible straight up notation for the variables. So, semi-log x, semi-log y, log-log, setting ticks and tick labels, properly labeling with x label and y label and title, changing the scaling behavior from one to the other, from linear to log, and vice versa. All of these give us perfect control over the appearance and scaling of a plot. I'll try to go and turn the x scale back to linear. And watch what happens. Now it's confused. Why? Because I have set labels to ticks that were proper for one kind of plot. But as I keep changing my mind on whether it should be linear or log linear, MATLAB has updated the ticks, but I had my label set and fixed. And so instead of giving the proper label, it takes however many I gave it, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then starts again. Because in the linear scaling, as you were recalling, it was marking the halves, 0.5, 1, 1.5, and so on. And that reverts this behavior, comes back. But I have my axis labels fixed. So clearly, this is not what I want. I need to then fix that. Of course, I can take a look at the X label rather x tick label. Those are the ones I set by hand. But I set them to ticks that were actually different ticks. So one can either try to fix this or we can just start, start all over again and go back to what we had in the beginning of this video. I'll start from a clean slate. I'll remember what A was and what B was. I'll log log this plot in black stars joined by lines. I'll grid it. I'll label it. I'll title it. I'll open it up in the limits of x and y. And then I still may not be satisfied because maybe that line that I plotted is too thin. What I really should then do is try to manipulate the line object after I've plotted it. I'll clear this figure and I'm going to use log log again, but I'm going to return a number from it. I'll call this number L. Label, limit, as before. Title, grid. Let's inspect what we have for L. L is a line object. It's a handle, if you will. It's an it's a object. L dot color is zero, zero, zero. L dot line style is the dash. L dot marker size was six. 
I'm going to make that 12. L dot font size is not appearing because there's no letters on it. L dot line width was a half is now two. L dot marker color was not properly spelled. Marker face color had no color because it's a star. If I change the marker, which was a star, to an O, now it has no face color either because it's empty. But I can set it to yellow. And I might want to change the edge color to red. And then I might want to change the line color, which is just called color, to green. As you can see, we have complete control of the appearance of any and all objects, styles, sizes, shapes, and so on that we are plotting. Remember the title? Well, it was just there. But if I ask for a handle to be returned, I now get an object called T, which has a font size, which if I want to change it, I just reassign it. I make it from 11 point to 16 point. Remember the X label? Well, I set it this way, but I probably should say XL equals this, because then I return an object that also has a font size, which I can then set to a bigger value. It was 11, I'll make it 14. And I can color that, and I can manipulate that. And I'll do the same with the Y label. It used to just be there, now it's going to be there and I keep the number that it gets assigned and then I change its font size to the same value, which is 14. Perhaps I might want to change it to the same value by saying it's the same as the XL font size. Or maybe I want to change it and say, hey, that's the font size of the title, which, what was it, 16 minus two. In other words, you can work with the result of the operation and work on that and reassign that, and then you can manipulate anything and everything that you want. That's it for this lecture on how to make a plot, linear, logarithmic, and then how to extract the objects of the various lines, figures, handles, axes that you plot, and then change them to completely suit your needs.